Today, we're going to cover how you can start vibe coding games with Gemini 2.5 Pro. So if you've been on Twitter or even YouTube, you would have seen that Google came out with Gemini 2.5 Pro roughly a week ago. And since then, Gemini 2.5 Pro has shot to the top of most LM rankings. So this is artificial analysis. You can see Gemini 2.5 Pro is at the top here. If you go to live bench, Gemini 2.5 Pro is definitely at the top as well. So Google something with this new model, but because it's not a chat GPT, because there's so much going on in the AI world, not that many people are giving this the attention it deserves. If you've been in the AI space for a while as well, you've also heard of vibe coding or vibe coding games. So that's what we're going to cover today. So all you need to do is go to gemini.google.com. Google's actually made the 2.5 Pro model free for now. I don't know how long they're going to keep this on for, but definitely worth playing around with if you haven't done so already. If you have a Google account, I don't know if you actually need to sign up for Gemini, but if you don't, you, you will need to do that. So all you need to do to start by going game is come to Gemini and describe what you want to do. If you want the game to be previewed in a canvas, so similar to Claude, you will need to press canvas here just to let it know that it can create code that will be previewed. So all you need to do now is just describe the game you want it to make in quite a lot of detail. So you'll probably see examples online where people try to do it with less detail, but as you know, the quality of your prompt still has quite a large impact on the output. And I think that will continue to be true because even if AI gets smarter and smarter, as long as it sort of is not AGI and super intelligence, as long as it's still within the realms of intelligence of a human, the level of detail in your communication to the LM or to the human will have a big impact on the output. So if you've been on Twitter, you've probably seen Levels IO's flying game. So maybe let's start with trying to build something similar to this, right? So let's come here and say, I want to build a browser flying game. I should be able to control the plane with my keyboard and be able to shoot. There should be some other airplanes flying around for me to shoot. Right. And this is just something to start with. If you were doing this for a game that you actually wanted to take further, something you might want to publish online, I would actually recommend fleshing out your game spec first with the AI before you actually get into building. But for the purpose of this, let's just get straight into building and maybe with our next game, we can do a bit more specking before we get into the actual build. So let's see, it's, it's building, it's writing all the code. Not much for me to do right now, just kind of waiting. You can see it's just a HTML game. So it's a 2D game. Maybe I should have specified that it should be a uh, 3D. So my plane does not seem to be here. So let's, it's not really what I wanted, but I didn't really describe it that clearly. So I say, I want a 3D flying game, somewhat similar to Flight Simulator. And Gemini 2.5, we'll just take that away and start coding. So that's sort of actually a good demonstration of why you should probably flesh out your game spec with Gemini 2.5 before you actually get into building. Because I haven't fleshed out my spec, it's just not super clear what I actually want. So now they're switching to a 3D flight simulator. Let's see how this goes. If you're logging into Gemini for the first time, just make sure you select 2.5 Pro Experimental. At least when I signed up for Gemini, which was a few months ago, it was using other models and I've had to manually update the models as new ones have come out. So I don't know if that's still the case if you sign up today, but yeah, yeah this does not seem to be working. Okay. Let's just say, I can't see anything. The screen is great. Right. What was it? Pitch? Oh, it's pitch. That's what's happening. I can pitch the plane. I want to see my plane rather than first person. 
So it is working technically. It's just, I'm in the cockpit, so I can't see anything and I don't know how to fly my plane. So I'm a bit stuck. I'm kind of stuck on the ground. I think is what's happening in this game right now. So let's get it to add my plane in so I can see my plane. And then we can get it to add skyscrapers, add other planes, ability to shoot. So skyscrapers, other planes, ability to, to shoot those planes. And a score for how many planes I've shot. Nice. It's like this plane. Oh, we're flying. Oh, it's actually pretty good. She is working decently. Can obviously make this more realistic. I seem to have flown away from the land. I don't know how to get back. And that's the land. Okay, awesome. So it's working basically. We can add now these other things that we want. So what I've found with Gemini 5 Pro is it actually varies every time you try it. So in some of my previous attempts, I've actually gotten it to work more completely the first time. So this is an example that I tried earlier. I just said this first one, I stopped the response. So single first response, first message was build a flying game skyscrapers and basically done this. So this one is actually quite a bit more complete than the one I just showed you. And this was a single prompt. So there does seem to be a bit of variance in Gemini 2.5 Pro. Obviously, I didn't prompt it exactly the same way, but there is a bit of variance there. So that's basically it for how to use Gemini 2.5 to code a game. It's not super detailed. This tutorial is not super detailed compared to some of my other tutorials. It's a bit more fun and just more to help you keep up with the new model developments coming out every week. If you would like to see a more detailed tutorial on building a more advanced game, then leave a comment below and I will put, will make that for you guys.